In the previous video, we discussed how important the exposure and recovery sliders were with regards to preserving highlight detail. And in this video, we're going to focus on how to control shadow detail using the fill light and black slider. So if you've ever used Photoshop before, you may have come across a filter called shadow and highlights, which is comparable in some respects to the recovery and fill light sliders in Camera Raw. Now the fill light attempts to recover details from the shadows without affecting the black. So as you can see, as I move the fill light slider across to the right hand side of the image, the darker areas of the seal's fur coat begin to lighten. Now, with that said, there's only so much detail that can be recovered and if you attempt to push things too far, you risk the introduction of fringing, noise, and other digital artifacts. So as we can see here, let's just, for uh, for purposes of showing you the effects of this slider, I'm going to set it to 100. And we're going to go and zoom in at 100% on the seal's flipper. And what you'll notice is along the line of the flipper is fringing and also continues along the actual rock face there. And that becomes quite obvious the more you actually uh, increase the amount of the fill light. Now you'll also notice that this is actually extremely noisy. Uh, <laughs> I did shoot this at ISO 1000 because it was quite low lighting conditions uh, on the morning that I actually took this photograph. Um, but with that said, when you do increase the fill light, it does tend to actually reveal a lot of aspects of the photo that you normally uh, wouldn't actually see. So if this is actually correctly, um, if this was actually set to a density that was sort of uh, where it's actually supposed to be, you'd actually notice that those uh, noise aspects actually wouldn't show themselves. So it's just something to pay particular attention to that if you do sort of push it <laughs> beyond the realms of, of what is actually visually pleasing to the eye that, that those things tend to show up. Now, you'll also notice just here that it is, like I was just saying, it's quite noisy. You can actually see the color noise in here as well. You can see here it's sort of a very reddy color around where my mouse is, and then it goes to a sort of a greeny yellow, and then over here to a, a sort of a bluey black color. Um, now, I, I just recommend for you when you're actually using this tool, just use it with caution because, uh, as, as I say, I tend not to add too much fill light to my images because in, in a future video, I'll actually show you a really cool technique of combining two raw files or two, two files of the same raw file, I should say, uh, where you actually adjust the exposure uh, to two different settings and then combine them in Photoshop using uh, smart objects. It's, it's a pretty cool technique, but I'll, I'll leave that for a future video. Um, but as, as I was saying, for the fill light, just be cautious when you actually use it. If the fill light concentrates on recovering shadow detail without affecting the blacks, then the black slider can be used to increase contrast in the shadows and blacks of your image without affecting the midtones. Now this adjustment is very similar to the black point adjustment in Photoshop levels. Now the key to using this slider is to adjust the black point of your image uh, until it just touches the edge of your histogram. So if, if we notice up the top here in my histogram, there's a space between uh, the left hand side of the histogram and the actual information in the image. So there's, there's basically empty space there. So what you want to do is you want to make adjustments to your black slider uh, until it sort of just reaches the edge of your histogram. Uh, what you'll notice I'm doing here is if you select the amount of any of these sliders and use the up and down keys on your keyboard, you can increase the values by increments of one. Now, if you want to increase the increments uh, in, in 10, just hold down shift whilst you're actually pressing the up and down keys. And you'll notice that they jump up in increments of 10. So by making that slight adjustment, you can see now that the histogram is sitting right on the left hand edge uh, of its uh, threshold, as it were. Um, now, with all this said, um, 
keep in mind that this is just a guide. The look and feel of your image must come first. Um, so you really want to monitor your, your blacks, but you must also sort of use personal preference and actually decide whether you want to push your blacks further than what uh, is, is visible in, the, in your actual histogram. Now, if you'd like a simplified view of how you should actually, of, of the clipping warnings that you see uh, when you're actually using the black slider, what you're seeing now, if you'd like a more simplified version of this, what you can do is hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac whilst you're using this slider. And that will display basically a white cam canvas with all the areas in your shadows that are clipping. All the areas in your blacks and shadows that are clipping. It's probably a, a more in-depth sort of explanation of it. Um, so what you'd you'd want to do is actually adjust the slider until you can't see any color um, patches or, or dots on your white canvas and and that way you're actually preserving the information in your original raw file which in this case is set to about one uh, the amount value to about one although you can still see a little bit uh, you can still see a little bit of cyan dots, but it's not too much, just along the flipper edge. Um, so that is the black slider. Uh, it's extremely useful and it goes hand in hand when using the exposure. So the exposure you're going to use to preserve your highlight details and the blacks you're going to use to preserve your shadow uh, black point in your image. Underneath the black slider is the brightness. Now the brightness is a slider that performs a non-linear adjustment that works by redistributing your mid-tone values without clipping your highlights. Now it performs very much like the midpoint slider in Photoshop levels. So as you can see as I increase the brightness value you'll see the image lightens uh, but predominantly it's the mid-tone areas that have moved across. Now there's a little bit of clipping uh, primarily because most of the information in the image is actually in the highlights, but as I move further across to the other extreme where we darken the image, you'll notice there's hardly any clipping in the shadows. So that's quite an interesting tool uh, or setting that you can play with to adjust your mid-tone areas. Now another uh, slider that allows you to adjust the mid-tone of your image is the contrast slider. Now this um, basically increases or decreases the contrast across your midtone range of your image. So as you can see, as I increase its value, you'll notice in the histogram that it's actually expanding those midtone values whilst leaving the highlights and shadows alone. So it hasn't actually clipped uh, anything in those areas, which is quite interesting. It's very similar just to applying an S curve across your image. Now both the brightness and contrast sliders achieve similar results to the adjustments that can be made using curves. With that said, curves actually provides more control over your image, which is why most photographers tend to lean towards curves. Now generally speaking, the sliders that you want to focus on first before making adjustments to your mid-tones are the exposure, recovery, fill light and blacks. In the next video, we're going to explore the clarity, vibrance, and saturation sliders.